the thing about it is LA ain't really known for its rich graffiti culture outside of the traditional gang tags and old English writing. We not really seen for much more than that. Back in the eighties, the, the three crews that I was on the on the edge of getting in when I first was was really cracking in 84, uh, 85, 86. I was trying to get in with this cat named Tane, who I end up going up against uh, Design Nine and all them uh, after after they dissed me in the creek. So that was, I was trying to get in with West Coast with Tane because Tane is the one who, who told me come. Come paint in the creek. Come, he seen my book on Fairfax and Venice. He said, I, I like what you got going on. Come paint in the creek. I came and painted in the creek. I came back when I met Design 9 to show him what I did. And they had sub hot oink. The motherfuckers had stamped me, but I didn't know who it was at the time. Right after that, I took him to the RTA, to the RTA yard. I took Design 9. By the next, next couple of days, we looked up and the whole yard was crossed out. Bam, 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 bam. By them, Design 9, MT2, and whoever. So he's like, okay, now I know who I got beef with because RTA had pulled me in. And since these dudes crossed us out, I had to rectify that situation because I'm the one who introduced them to the yard. I, sh I shouldn't have did it. All this other shit started happening with West Coast. And I guess there might have been some K2Ss that didn't like. We was pushing LTS and they would come through. It was just all kind of politics shit going on. For whatever reasons, I didn't get a chance to move forward and get with UCA, and I just went all hardcore Soul Kings, RTA, LTS, and, and that's how that went. So when I got a chance to get with Earn, I don't know, like I said, that might have even been over a year ago when we did this one. We was uh, giving a little bit of respect to that because the homie Chase, he, he, not, he not even in the States right now, but uh, it's always been a lot of love and respect for the brother Chase. And my name is Oxrox. I'm from AWR, All Rights Reserved, or Artwork Rebels. Has many different meanings. Grew up in West LA. Starting from elementary, I went to Shenandoah, uh, Pasture Junior High, and Hamilton High. I think with numerous different ways. I think I think by growing up in a kind of a gang area, you know, seeing the the artwork on the walls, a um, lot of different influences. I think some are from the movies um, and my surroundings. Where I grew up was uh, several gangs. It was 18th Street. You had West Side Locals. You had Culver City on this side, uh, Helms Gang, um, Sawtell, you know, all the West LA gangs. Um, Grew up close to Motor Yard. I had Jefferson down the street. You had the La Bayona Creek, you know, like a couple little spots where everybody was getting up at that time. The Beltmont Tunnel was, you know, well known. Um, Venice Beach, a couple other yards, and I'm not, you know. <laughs> was Belmont safe for you? Our first time there was kind of kind of scary. The first time there was kind of kind of scary. We we were showing up, and out of nowhere, just a bunch of fools, you know, bum rush out of everywhere. What are you guys doing, you know? And you know, we're out here writing, and it was, you know, it was all good. I think my main influence was probably just amongst, because I grew up across the street from Pat, and just seeing all the graffiti around. We would practice. In our back, in in his backyard, and with Eclipse and you know the other the other crew members from AWR, we would go in the back and practice, and from there it just took off. I met Mark Seven in early '90. Um, we used to work together. We worked together at a place called Fetco, which a lot of people know, and it was a great place to work. Um, I met him, I would always see him scribbling on something, but we didn't have that interaction yet. Um, but little by little, you know, working in a small little family atmosphere place, we, you know, we started talking. 
I would see what he was doing. I was like, hey, man, that's nice, you know, whatever, you know, this and that. But we never clicked on what crew he was from or where I was from. You know, but we, but later on in life, we, well, we ended up finding out, well, wow, you're from this crew. You're from this crew. You know, small world. Mm -hmm. Well, Clever, at the time, what made him significant, him, he, he had been one of the, like, 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 like you, you still looking at a developing LA when it comes to graffiti and who are the hitters, who, 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 just like early anything else, who are the hitters in those areas, whether it's motor, diet, bike riding or whatever. With graffiti, him and, a, and another cat was pushing bomb force off of Imperial, uh, Imperial and uh, Western. So when you would go across LA, if you seen anything up, right there, there was a Donkey Kong mural they had said destroy and um it was him and maybe like no more than one or two other artists that that dominated that area right there so when we looking at la we like okay well who's over there he was a hitter from he was doing his work he was doing the work he might have not even been as strong as his counterpart but he was he was he was uh one then because he was prominently known at the schools in his area he was connecting with people between Gardena, like well, I guess like even like prior to Gardena, like it had to be from junior high school level to high school. So by the time you're here in the high school, people that's knowing him, like Gardena and Washington, a lot of them is like, oh, Clever connected me. I guess Clever was like me in a lot of ways, but he was already started his mission connecting people. And he had made it to the Belmont. He brought cats from Carson with him. He, you know, he, he started networking. You know, we all got together and did the Crenshaw Wall, a memorial for him. Now, the interesting thing is he had been already working on getting the permission for the wall on the Crenshaw Wall through uh, Snake Doctor, who, once again, going back to that 93rd spot in South Central in Vermont, that's when we first started doing some projects. So he was working with Snake Doctor. Snake Doctor is an elder in the, in the community who had already been doing things with art and he was giving us the permission to scratch our wall. So when Clever got killed, we was just in the process of getting ready to get to the wall. And after he got killed, we ended up doing his memorial on the wall. Oh man, I'm gonna have to give it up to, uh, rest in peace, Tegadar, Dream. Yep. He was Filipino. Because when Dream used to come, he came to all our shows. I mean, he came to all our events. And Dream used to be, he used to dress just like us. They thought he was one of the Booyah. He would come with the county jacket, you know, the Booyah braids, the bandana tie. You know, he had all the rubber bands, the war braids. But the thing about Dream, when you see his, his county jacket in the back, he used to bomb it. You know, with, his, with a certain kind of, uh, you know, he used to bomb that back in those days when they used to bomb their back of their jackets, you know, the, uh, the, the jean jackets, you know, like the New York style. But Dream was the first one I seen did a county jacket. And that's what he did one for Gangster Red when we went to Europe. Uh, if you see our video cycle funk, Red's wearing a county jacket and he and right here this whole side is hit up with all like the it's a gangster mouse with a cane, well uh, with some with some biscuit with spat with a with a brim on this whole side. Red, uh, 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 Dream did it. You know. How far you think Dream go back with the hip hop? When it first arrived in LA, early 80s, okay. yeah, around 83, 82, when it first arrived. He was the first one from Carson to representing, and he his name, he, 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 you can see his art. You know, he rolled that 110 freeway to that 405. You see them alleys, you see that big old piece. Dream was the yep, yep, Dream was, he represented Carson to the fullest, you know what I mean? And, you know, shout out to him, because he was part of our era. He was part of the era to try to make it out also. But at that time, it was hard, because remember, graffiti was, you know, it, it was a cr criminal act. You know, you get caught doing graffiti or tagging, you know, you, you know, go to jail, you know what I mean? But now look, it's a million dollar industry now. Everywhere, now you can go, now you got people like Brad Pitt buying pieces from graffiti artists that, artists that are famous, like like Slick. You know, my boy Slick from Hawaii, you know, he came, he's part of that era also. Came from Hawaii, came to LA, and made his name also with the same area when we first started. OG Slick was the, he was one of the first ones also with, with Dream, you know, He's um, from Hawaii and made his name. And now look, Slick is, he got his own business. You know, he's worldwide. He's doing, um, 
he just did a uh, um, he did some painting in the palms right now. If you go to the palms, you see his painting up there. You're like, damn, that's Palms what Casino. Yeah, Palms Casino, Las Vegas. Slick got his uh, painting pieces in there. You know, now graffiti art art is is make it's a million dollar million dollar industry now. I've done a lot of advertisement for big corporations out there where you see uh, murals for Mountain Dew, Pepsi, uh, car ads on the wall. I've, I've done a lot of that. And it's an experience, man, because we don't get a chance to do, like, or sometimes we get to do, like, graffiti art type style lettering. Sometimes we got to do what the client want. And that's work right there. Just back in the days when we see that that's how we do slick uh, from uh, Tagged Art from, uh, I mean, from Dream. And then Slick, our second single, Psycho Funk, Slick is in our video. He's, you know, it was like a year, year the, the theme of our video was uh, in the Psycho War. And Slick's in there with a, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's tagging and he's in the white robe and the ward all cycled up and his hair is all spiked up. But yeah, and then but Slick did a good piece on Melrose one time. It was a, a he, he he hit up the whole kind of right by the Marvel comic store. It was a blank wall, man. He went early in the morning and people was, hey man, a slick hit up a, a big old piece with Gangster Red on there. At that time, Red had a white van on Astro Astro on Dayton, Astro van on Danes with a fifth wheel on it, and he had Red flying up to the sky. And on the bottom, he hit up uh, once upon a drive by, and then some other uh, artist I don't know his name. He hit another wall, uh, a child of battle slick, and he put uh, a 6 4 with Kid Frost in there. And put this is for the Rarasa, and everybody was tagging who was, you know, who was the best. But slick hit that because you can see the Daytons, man. It was, and he did the fifth wheel going to space, the red gangster is hanging out like that. And he put Once Upon a Drive by that was one of our songs on our first album. But yeah, we go, but slick and dream was on the original era when hip hop first hit LA. From, 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 the, from the pop and hip hop MC. In those days, that's when they had uh, the radio and uh, every Ice T number, Evil E, the glove, they were hosting the, um, he was the MC of the radio. So a lot of people was trying to get in that the radio back in the days, you know. But the thing about Slick and, and Dream, they got their respect from New York. I mean, it's just my opinion. And I know a couple artists that we know from New York gave it up to them. You know, they got the, cause you know, when it was, you know how New York, they used to, you know, they kind of made fun of us when we were breaking. Okay, now they're doing graffiti. But the only thing about New York, you couldn't get our popping in our lives. You could tell a, a, a popping from New York when the popping from LA. It's a whole a West Coast style. The way Blue Sam and them invented the Lips Blue, which we know, okay, he's from the West Coast in between. Um, he's from the East Coast. You know. try my best to do to do my damn best because it's mandatory that whatever I do on the wall it got to stand out I want my work to be impactful to where when people see it when they when they walk away from it they gonna say damn I, hey that piece in that in that spot that shit was booming you know what I'm saying like when I come up in the generation where can control technique was very important you know to be able to master the starting where the can start to where it should finish. You know, I don't come from the generation where we into letting a can drip and leaving a bunch of mistakes. You know, even though that's natural and it's raw and it's, and it's grimy and gritty to see like, you know what I'm saying, if a writer was under pressure, but the main goal was to see while being under pressure, how fly you could be and how smooth you could be with your techniques. And that's, that's the generation I come from. I was raised under two writers directly, which was bizarre. He taught me how to do stuff in my books. The other guy named was Rich, which was part of DEF crew. He's the one that taught me how to spray paint on the wall. How to properly paint a wall and do a piece in the right steps. From your having your sketch on paper, to sketching it on the wall, to doing your fill-in, to doing your background, to doing the final outline. 
So, you know, this right here would be considered to me a semi-wild style type piece or a semi-mechanical style. And, uh, you know, so I really have a good time, man, doing what I do. Uh, I'm known for doing a lot of good things with putting colors together. So people say I'm, I didn't, I didn't call myself this. People say I'm the master of color. But I don't give myself that credit. I give credit back to people, like I say, Mark 7. Uh, I give there's so many writers out there, man, that was good with colors. Mainly Charlie, Soon, um, Risky. Who else? Uh, man, it was so green, you know. But they, him and Dream, mostly was doing a lot of silvers, and every now and then they would bust out their colors. I would say green, you from SMD, and you know, well, you're green. You know, green would basically. Uh, <laughs> When I look at his work and his letter style formation, man, that was great inspiration right there, man. To this day, his his work is timeless. You know what I'm saying? To this day, um, same same work was a good inspiration. You know, so I always gotta give credit where credit was due. Charlie, like I say, from DTK. You know, all these good writers, man, has some impact on what you see me doing. When I paint. I always keep a standard of quality in my head because I remember what made me inspired coming to a yard to look at other great, great writers work. You know, I didn't ever go to the yard and really see a bunch of whack stuff until later on down the line. But in the, my earlier stages of development, it was like an actual museum. You would go and just see full masterpieces on the wall, you know. In 88, I remember going to the West Coast tracks in the motor yard and seeing the Crenshaw wall with the pieces and pictures of the Belmont Tunnel, West Coast K2S battle, and a few other little places uh, at the car wash on Venice right there in Redondo. So here's what I was going to say to that. How did I become part of West Coast Artists? I used to always admire every all the photos and the actual physical standing in front of the fresh burners they were doing back then. West Coast Artists, they was a collective to what was developed off of soon, right? And they had their own thing, but they basically held over there. West LA, um, where was their yard? They, they was over West LA by the by the by Sepulveda. They was down there off of Sepulveda. They had little local locations here and there, backstreet walls and shit. We used to do our footwork to go see where PJ and them hit up. In 1988. I remember. Now, mind you, I seen a lot of this stuff before 88. But in 88, B-Boy Records came into effect off of Slauson. Now, I saw when PJ and Rev and them would do Melrose on the on newsstand. I saw when PJ and Rev would do the, the skateboard shop on Venice. But then all of a sudden, I'm going down Slauson on the on the bus. And I just so happened to look out the window. I seen this, these graffiti pieces on the front of the record store. I was like, oh, damn. I was like, man, I seen the character, the fresh colors on the letters, the, it was clean. I didn't know what that was. I was like, man, damn, they let them hit up on the building? Cause we, that's in the hood. So I get off the bus, go back, you know, and uh, I'm looking, okay, I come back on another day. And I finally got a chance to meet PJ from West Coast Artists. That was the first, I didn't know PJ was a black writer from LA because they got a PJ in New York. So anyway, PJ from LA, from West Coast, he was like, hey, what's up, man? I say, how you doing, man? I say, hey, did you do all this? He said, uh, me and Rev did this. I said, oh, okay. I said, hey, man, like, I'm 14 years old, man. How can I be part of West Coast? You know, like, how can I be part of your crew? I don't know, man. I came out, of, like, my, my immediate competition in that would have been Tane and, 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 and Design 9. But then design, I seen him up with more tags. I didn't see his burners up as much as me. They had here and there, you know, and there's a whole story about how I came into even knowing them. But just off the top, I was so like addicted to doing it and doing whatever I could. I I, I see myself as that. I think I was out to set a uh, 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 I was out to set a, a, a statement because of what I felt. I felt I was rejected when I first met Soon. And I was like, I was out to, to to go after. So talking about tagging and bombing, I had my aliases. My Mark Seven wasn't up at, at one point as much as my my Pele's, but then but then I was out with my Mark Sevens and my and so I was doing a lot of shit 
to, to, to put my foot on the stamp. You know, I was doing reckless shit to put my foot out there as it was me. So for a period of time, I led that. And then some of my car hearts came up under me like Jimmer and them, and they start doing things. There's a rapper that come out and say some shit about soon ran mid city, midtown. Soon's aspect was I run the city. <laughs> I mean, real shit from Pasadena to wherever he was doing it as far as being a up bomber and understanding about New York principles or whatever that is, they felt that was doing it. We didn't get no mentors to tell us this is how you do it and this is how you set the trend to take it beyond the next nigga. We wasn't given that. We wasn't given the black book history like you see in the subway art thing where they folding out and they got and they could tell you every color. We wasn't given that. We was we was either getting it from the book or getting what whatever we developed, how to make uh chalkboard marsh markers, you know, put ink in there with chalkboard shit with a deodorant stick. We was coming to create different shit. So when we didn't when we didn't when we felt we we felt like he turned his back on us i was the motherfucker just just blazing and then like i said it all brought back a gang of different people trying to come and learn and and, and build with me and then it used to show in a lot of the letters so yeah pj was like you need to show us all your, your stuff we need to see consistency of you on the wall paint i was like is that what i gotta do he said yeah show me some of your work I used to go to B-Boy Records after school because I went to Crenshaw High School. So, like, man, I became addicted to going over there. It was like going to the candy store. So after I would leave from school, instead of going home, I would go straight to the record store and kick it. I just wanted to be around the essence of it, man, and just soak it up like a sponge as a young uh, teenager. And so I would go to the record store, B-Boy Records, man, and PJ being there airbrushing shirts. I bought my artwork, what you think? Well, I take that back. I met Dello next. Dello was at B-Boy Records. He was doing artwork in there as well. He go through my book. He flips through the pages quick. And he hands it back. I ain't never had nobody look at my book that quick. And most people sit there and, and be ooh and ah and taking their time. Dello was the first person who ever took my book and just said, boop, 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 boop. And boom. I was like, damn, how should I take that as a diss? Uh, man, that as a young kid, man, that was trippy for me. He said, you're not ready for West Coast. I was like, oh, okay, well, what do I need to do? He said, you got to advance yourself, man. You got to keep practicing. He said, you'll get there. And he left it at that. I was like, damn. So then I talked to PJ next. The very next day, I came back with photograph. PJ said, let me see your work. Here's the difference. PJ looked at my work. Now, this is where I get my, my attitude from with helping others. PJ, I laid out my photographs across the counter. PJ looked at them and he gave me a, a good critique of my work. He said, create, this is okay. This is all right. This is not good. See, you can be sensitive back then. You had to be strong, man, growing up. A lot of people get their feelings hurt and, and say, I'm gonna give up. But when PJ was critiquing my work, he started questioning me. Why are you doing this? Why you put the arrow there? Where does the arrow come from? Why are you linking it to that? And I'm thinking, man, why are you asking me all these questions? Man, damn, I'm up here busting. But he said, create, let me explain something to you. He said, when you're doing your pieces, everything has a purpose. It don't, you just don't do whatever. Now, how many kids get that today and grab? No, none of them get nothing like that, unless I'm dealing with them. I'm gonna tell them like, hey, man, you gotta you know, know what you're doing. So anyway, uh, they didn't let me in West Coast right away. PJ said, keep working at it, man. And the more you keep working at what you need to be learning, don't worry, you'll get, you'll become good and we'll see if we should let you in. That right there gave me motivation, some inspiration and some encouragement. I ain't gonna lie, I got my feeling maybe hurt just a little bit, but you know what? It made me strong. Cause when I left that day, I went home. PJ told me this. He said, why don't you go back home and start practicing your simple style letters again? And he said, and once you get your simple style down packed, he said, everything come from the simple style and you just start learning how to add on to it and how to bend the letter. I was like, damn, I never thought of that. Cause that ain't the way I came up in it. So anyway, that's how I got part of West Coast uh, throughout time. Design 9 started running uh, with, with me and some of the homies. We seen them at a party, so we all start kicking it. And uh, we was out in Southgate. 
they were doing like a house a house hip hop parties back then. So we was over there in Southgate, and then we hooked up with Design Nine, and we start running around. And Design Nine was a big influence with looking at his piece books. Next thing you know, man, like the inspiration of watching him paint and then us painting with him. He said, man, you good, man. He said, I want to put you down West Coast. And I told him what happened. He said, I don't care, man. He said, I'm going to let Minor know. I'm going to let uh, PJ know. He said, I'm letting all the official OG heads know. Oh, okay. Nineteen. Who are the OG heads of West Coast? Uh, PJ, Rival, Minor. PJ, Rival, Minor. Uh, uh, uh. Rack. I think I think Rack, I think it's one more if I can if I remember correctly. But those are the, the I think I think these are four or five main original heads. But those are the original ones. And uh, you know, a lot of people they don't be knowing their history, so they they don't understand the the you know the whole lineup of where they strength come from to a certain degree. You know, to understand that is very important. History is important. A lot of people say, well, why is history important? Because you have to understand the foundation of, of the true raw essence of what was established so you could push it to the next level and have a, a, a base foundation of what you represent. And, you know, and plus it's part of your heritage of what you what you uh, being part of. Now, I will say this. I tell this to a lot of writers. You don't have to depend upon the crew. You could be a solo writer as well and get out there and put in work. But what's good about a crew is that when you're with a crew, you can do a lot of things together as a force. You you can have somebody doing characters, somebody doing letters. You know, I'm good with everything. I'm good with letters. These ain't even one of my high power characters. I was just joking around with a, a cool, humorous type style character with some shading in it. You know, I didn't when I first started off, man. I didn't know nothing about shading, no characters. It was just plain like beige and black. That was it with stock tips. You know, now if you look at the pieces, you know, you can see like, like man, like the way I shade in stuff, you know, the way I've learned how to blend my color as an artist. Um, this is another aspect of growing and learning as a young writer coming up. Who are my influences in that? PJ, once again, Rev from KSN. A green from SMD, Cool Boy, and uh, Clever, OG Able, or Sphere, Flame, uh, Mr. Cartoon, they know him as now. But uh, before that, like soon, soon was the coldest. Him, I'm not sure if Styly 3, oh, Kango, Kango, over at the top of the 20s, he had a cold ass, little simple bubble letter throw ups. Say, uh, soon, soon you know what i mean like just can't can't you get can't out so. you can't get away from that i mean rather he used the thinnest cap to catch that so i mean the sn or rather he used the fat ass flaring ass one his shit i guess you know what bro at the time new york for that style of of, of writing it was that wasn't gangster writing you know what i mean or at least if they get gangster writing it wasn't like how ours was so if you was in new york and you wanted to have hand styles like an L.A. cat, then you have to look at who was the dope, dopest L.A. cat. Rather, it was the ones that, man, do, do, did you ever do history on on, on, on L.A. gangster writing? You a should, little bit, but not, not deep. You should do it. Just when you look at, like, some of the 80s writing mm -hmm. and how theirs was, like, more, like, like, like shorter little cuts yeah, versus I, in the 90s I, I, when they went that way. The lettering was so cold. So, like I said, like he just had an authentic New York shit, and so you don't even know how these motherfuckers is doing that. So, how he put it out there was so funky. His shit just stood. Beyond that, I mean, it was probably some others, but I think because New York, in a sense, was the bar of of, of style, then there was those are the ones that always stood out. You know what I mean, like. Anything else is all 90s and later. So so when we talking about early and mid 80s, somebody would have to correct me to tell me, nah, nigga, what about such and such a throw up? What about such and such a throw up? The only places you seen throw ups was at the yards. 
Anybody that was leaving the yards is where you would see continuous throw ups. Anybody that was going all city like soon, you had to prove yourself and go all city. The best I did with that was going up and down main streets, trying to get that. And if they lasted, you know, so you would see that all around <laughs> uh, Fairfax area. Fairfax, uh, all the way up to the high school and Melrose and all those areas was getting hit. Then, I guess you could say Wilshire all the way up. Then, by the time we found, like, going to the Belmont and then finding out where Radiotron was, then you seen all those areas. Like this. To survive as a team, uh, I embellish the scene like mad dreams. Design nine, crash and retain the soul kings. And persevered till my name became revered. The rapid transit lord of creation, my mind kid. I came here eager to grab, so do the math. A mentor never was given, I made a path. And grew myself to go as a leader, cause you need a teacher they can learn from coming from out the slum. Mid city, down to midtown, I held it down. Cause soon was such a hater, and Larry was just a clown. The young lords got all the awards, cause they were first. But seven put the town on the first and stole the first. First place, LA, bombs red Pele. Way before the forest side tagging more Pele. The 212 and 33 belong to me. The vandal on the RTD for vanity. The origins of rap expression was manifesting. A prince to a king through the years of my adolescence. With classic.